Hello, my name is Hannah Belez. I'm the CMO of NetClean Technologies. For those of you that are new to NetClean, we develop software that protect businesses, IT environments against the risk and threat of child sexual abuse material. We are here today to have a conversation about our latest results from NetClean Insights, a unique report where we have talked to over a thousand senior IT leaders. And we can give you an exclusive image on the IT industry's response to child sexual abuse material. Together with me in the studio, I have experts covering this topic from different perspectives. We have Jörn Selström, superintendent from the Swedish police, focusing on internet-related crimes, sexual crimes against children, and also with an experience from Interpol. We have Brian Honnen, uh, internationally recognized uh, cybersecurity expert and CEO of BH Consulting. Welcome, Brian. And last but not least, we have Anna Netclean, Anna Boyström, CEO of Netclean. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So I turn to you, Brian, first. Um, what are your reflections on the survey results you have seen? I thought the survey was very interesting, Anna, in that it, was, it demonstrated and highlighted what many people in the IT industry knows is going on but that probably we don't, haven't been able to uh, put our arms around it or to be able to uh, uh, put any figures on it. And I think it's very interesting to see some of the statistics. I think one of them was like 84% uh, of uh, respondents said they're aware of uh, it, uh, child sexual abuse material being found in other companies, but they weren't aware of it in their own companies. And I think that's a very strange statistic in that you know the problem the problem is elsewhere the problem's not in my in my area and i think realistically people need to take a good look at themselves and to determine and examine their environments to make sure they're not hosting this material either you know the problem isn't it's not somebody else's problem it's all our problem and that's what the survey really demonstrates to everybody mm. Yeah, thank you, Brian. And Bjorn and Anna in the studio. Yeah, I, I agree a lot about what you say, Brian, and, and also from a from a non-tech company perspective and from a law enforcement perspective. I was a little bit surprised about the awareness, the, 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 the level of awareness, and I was kind of happy about it. At the same time, I see a problem that you're aware of a problem, but you don't do, as far as I'm concerned, uh, enough to to prevent it or to 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 fight yeah. it because I, I I think it's no one can 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 do everything but everyone can do something mm. and I think that you have like a, a moral responsibility uh, as well as a protective responsibility to your own like infrastructure yeah and I think these two two things can can be combined yeah they're not paradoxical no, at exactly. all definitely exactly. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and I agree. I mean, 64% had an experience of, of uh, finding child sexual abuse material in their corporate environments uh, in, in the past five years. And uh, was it 57% that Yeah, had 57 with repeat cases. With repeat cases. Mm. And I think that's, uh, that tells something about, you know, uh, the awareness is there, but the, the lack of doing something and mm. also the lack of understanding about what these type of images really are. Uh, was the thing that really st st stood out for me. And yeah. I think that uh, we cannot tolerate this. I mean, because there are, you know, there are technologies there to, to, to protect businesses, IT environment against this threat. And uh, if you don't do it, mm. you, you, uh, um, you risk uh, your in the integrity of your brand, you risk your IT environment and children suffer mm. from it. Yeah, I think what was really striking to me when reading the report was the number of cases, the number of repeat cases that there were so, so high numbers, uh, once, even if you had one case and then you had multiple repeat cases again. So I think that also confirms the conversation and the dialogue you're having here. Yeah, I think what it, it, it demonstrates that, uh, you know, many IT departments are focused on business threats to their environment. So they look, look at threats to the availability of the systems, to the integrity of the systems, to the confidentiality uh, of the systems. The, the traditional triad for cybersecurity, the, the CIA, the confidentiality, integrity and availability. And they can be measured in real terms for many IT professions and IT security professions as to a direct impact on the business. Child sexual abuse material, uh, as, as Anna has, has highlighted, is that uh, 
it can have a reputation or a business risk, but it doesn't it isn't elevated to the same level. And therefore, when it's discovered, I think in many cases, IT professionals and businesses don't know what to do or how to deal with it or what what their responsibilities are. And I think that's why we we see that statistic of that high number of repeat cases is that there's a, there's a lack of uh, maybe urgency, but maybe a lack of clarity as to how, as a business, can we respond to this? How can we engage with law enforcement to deal with this issue? And you know, uh, as Bjorn said, was how can we adhere to our moral obligation to to to, to report this uh, material and to help the children that are ultimately the victims of this uh, abuse material. Mm. Yeah, and also I'm, I'm a little bit afraid that these high numbers that we've seen in, the, in, in this insight report, um, what happens to the, to the employees that, that have this kind of material on, on the systems? Mm. Um, I fear that it's, it's good that you have the awareness, but my fear is that you try to hide it under the carpet and you release the person from, from the contract and then it's, yeah. it's end of story and you delete the images from your system. Mm. But it doesn't really take away the, the, the problem. Mm. Um, we know exactly. for a fact that people uh, who download and, and watch these kind of materials also have a high, higher risk of physical offending, offline offending. Mm. So yeah. we need to, to, I mean, it's a good start that we have this awareness, but we have to take it to the next level, as you said. And we have a, like a moral responsibility to do our thing. Yeah, and, and I, I can see another risk in what you're saying. I mean, uh, the risk of stumbling across this material in an IT system. Uh, what, what, uh, I mean, you, you expose people that work in your IT uh, department to, to, to this type of material. And that is something that, I mean, you don't want to see this type of images because mm -hmm. it can be very traumatizing for you if you are not trained to, to deal with them. And that's another risk I can see uh, that could happen when you don't have you know, technology in place that detects the actual image itself and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, don't expose you to, to it in that sense. So if, if companies don't have the right uh, technology and the right processes in place to deal with this, uh, this uh, type of material, I think it's a risk for, for the staff working in the IT department. Mm. So you are seeing risk from different perspectives here, and we're going to deep dive a bit further into that as well. But one follow-up question from my side is the risk profiling here, because what you are also talking a bit about here, Anna, is when you have these employees with these type of behaviors, you're exposing the company to risk. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, I can well if when 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 this type of material uh, is uh, found in an IT environment, they are they come from suspicious sites on on the internet or suspicious places on the internet, uh, or they could be shared through peer to peer or other type of you know encrypted uh, forums. Uh, so with with an image, there is other threats that comes into to the company. It could be Trojan horses or it could be. Uh, a lot of other pornography that is uh, not detected by any other systems, uh, and it could be, you know, uh, that you, you, the, the person can leave a trace uh, on the internet that could be connected back to the uh, company uh, in different ways. So there is uh, this type of material is not found uh, on on sites that are, you know, healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as working within cybersecurity, Brian, this is also, uh, I assume, something that you must be very aware of. And we have seen in the survey that companies respond too late uh, and companies don't have the protection enough. So there, as you can, as you arise, uh, awareness is high, but the protection is not fully there yet. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. You know, there, there is awareness of the, that the, that material is out there and companies and business leaders don't want that material in their environment. But they don't see it as a business threat. They don't see it as a business risk. And uh, therefore, I think the focus is is, is not, you know, probably the phrase, it's not to say that the, the focus is not to find the material, but uh, to not actively go and look for that material in your network. Because if I don't have find the problem, I don't have to deal with the problem. So I think that's part of the challenge, as I said, is that uh, you don't have active measures in place to detect the material. So therefore, if you don't detect it, you don't have to respond to it. Uh, and the IT teams 
don't probably have the right training, as Anna has said as well, or, or the supports to be able to respond or, or deal, deal with the material as well. So uh, I think there's a lot of challenges for businesses in this. And, you know, I do know, uh, as Bjorn has said there, 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 there are uh, instances where companies have discovered material on their environment. Their response has been simply to let the employee move on elsewhere, leave the images and uh, continue on. Now, that hasn't really dealt with the problem because the employee has simply moved on elsewhere. They're probably going to continue to offend and more, you know, there's a high likelihood that that is going to turn into physical abuse at some stage. Uh, you've also, by deleting that material from your network, in effect, you've deleted evidence of a crime that that material, if it was reported law enforcement, could be uh, shared through Interpol or through uh, Europol with other law enforcement agencies. And they could use that material to, to try and create a, if you like, a bigger picture of the people behind the abuse and which hopefully then could lead to convictions. And, and more, but more and more importantly, to rescue children from that abuse. Mm. So deleting the material is not dealing with the problem. That's 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 just hiding the problem. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yes, and I just want to continue that and for me um, it's good that the awareness is there but awareness of what? It's an awareness about child abuse material or child abuse images. But seriously what is it? What is the mm -hmm. images mm -hmm. depicting? And I think it's um, or I know because I, I'm, when I'm speaking about this, there's a there's a lack of understanding between the image and the physical abuse. It is af, as if an image is not related to physical abuse, and we often call this internet-related sexual crimes on children. But internet, it's 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 just like a a platform for communicating. It's not where the, the crime takes place itself. So if you ask the children being sexually abused or raped. Mm. For them, this is a, a, a physical reality. What you see in the company business environment is a picture of this. And I think lack of awareness when it comes to what it actually is. Um, um, and it, knowing this, it's like you say, Brian, knowing this should, yeah. should absolutely, I think, um, benefits the, 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 the companies to take further actions about this and mm. to see it as seriously as it should be seen. Mm. And Netlin has uh, quite a long background working with the law enforcement on this and also the data coming from uh, parts of law enforcement as well. So you might already answer that question, but is that also, would you say, so important that there is a collaboration between the, the private tech sector, private sector and the law enforcement uh, to tackle these questions? Absolutely. And for me, this is not a law enforcement issue. This mm. is a societal problem and everyone who who can or has um, um, an ability to, to do their part of it uh, should do so. And of course, if we can cooperate between uh, organizations, companies, uh, um, government organizations, uh, it's vital to, to get rid of the problem. So for me, as a law enforcement officer, working together with Netlink for many years, uh, it's super important, mm. absolutely. Mm. There is a great awareness, we have already mentioned that, but there is also a great will to see action and not only from organizations, but also from the government, from the internet service providers. If you would summarize the most important actions, what would that be? I'll start with you, Anna. Well, I think that uh, Brian uh, said it in the beginning. Uh, it's about taking action yourself and not, not uh, point the finger to someone else. It's not like, you know, if Facebook uh, deal with it, if Google deal with it, it's, uh, it's going to, to be no problem no more. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a problem that exists everywhere. In, uh, everywhere there is internet connection, everywhere where it's, uh, you know, you have computer and devices and cloud storage solutions, etc. Uh, people will use that to consume child sexual abuse material or to, to exploit that infrastructure to yeah. for this purpose so i think it's about you know uh, looking yourself in the mirror and and, uh, and ask yourself what can i do um, before i i put the demand on someone else mm. clean your own house first mm. <laughs> mm. yeah brian bjorn do you have anything to add on that well i, I think uh, as anna said there we can't make this somebody else's problem 
this is all our problems to deal with. Mm. But I do think, uh, you know, maybe governments could take a more proactive way in supporting and helping deal with this problem by uh, providing better education or better awareness and better engagement with the business community on how they can deal with this material. So, you know, maybe encouraging engagement between businesses to get in touch with law enforcement and ask law enforcement if we discover this material how do we react how do we engage with you what way do you want us to protect this material or seize this material and also for law enforcement to educate business to say look when you come to us with this problem this is how we're going to deal with it i think many businesses have a fear that if law enforcement uh, are contacted that they're going to come in and seize all their computers as evidence and walk back out the door with all their it equipment and the business then is left with no it environment that is not the case we need to make sure that the businesses understand how the engagement should happen uh, what their responsibilities are and then how they can support law enforcement to deal with this because, as, as Bjorn has said, this is a physical crime. It's not a virtual crime. It's not a picture. This is a crime. There are real live children suffering uh, as a result of this activity. And we, as individuals and as a society, need to protect those children as best we can. So, governments need yeah. maybe to be more proactive in engaging and educating the businesses how they can. Uh, respond and, and engage with law enforcement and likewise businesses need to reach out to to, to, to the law enforcement and say look how can we help mm -hmm. and we can see a perception uh, from the it professionals in this survey that this is a growing problem it's a problem that has been growing during the pandemics which we also have data <laughs> earlier data to confirm but what is your view here Bjorn? is it a growing problem yeah, it depends on what kind of, of internet-related sexual crimes on children we're talking about. But if mm. you're talking about possession and distribution of child abuse material, yes, indeed, we can see an increase during the pandemic. And it's, it's not really hard to understand, given the fact that we spend more time home. We work from home and we spend mm. more time home with lockdowns and everything. So we have more time to spend in front of our computers or t TV sets. And this is also the case with people who have a sexual interest in children. They spend more time behind their computers doing their thing. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean, especially not in Sweden, where we didn't have the lockdown for, we didn't close down the schools and yeah. stuff like that. So the risk of being groomed as a child is not as high as in the countries where the schools were closed, for instance. So we can see that kind of, of, of differences. But when it comes to possession and distribution of material, absolutely, there are more people on the forums, that, that, on the file sharing forums, yes. Mm -hmm. which. Which also creates an environment of, of supply and demand, of course. The more people you have and the more, the more material they collect, they, they also demand new material, which of course means more physical abuse. Mm. So we have had a really interesting conversation about this urgent topic. I can hear we, you have quite a unified view on that awareness isn't enough, that there is a gap between awareness and action, but also understanding on how this risk and threat from a company perspective is directly related uh, to the awful crime. Uh, that happens to children. Um, I can also hear you saying that this is a growing trend. Uh, it's not likely to diminish over time and that companies need to look after the house or kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Um, before we end the conversation, what is your final messages? I start with you, Brian. Uh, well, I, I would encourage people to download the report and read it. Uh, it's very enlightening. It's very engaging report. The statistics are there to demonstrate that this is a problem and it's a growing problem. And then having read the report, just to think back and reflect, how can I, in my role within my business and within my organization, how can I prevent this from happening in my organization? And if it does happen in my organization, how can I then respond and how can I engage law enforcement? So maybe after reading the report, just do that. And also contact your local police force and ask them for advice on, on how would you respond to this if, if you do come across that material and have that relationship established before you, 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 you come across it. And then I suppose finally is just go to the business leaders and explain how serious a problem this is and 
how they as a as a company and as part of society have an obligation to allow you and other IT professionals to uh, deal with this, these issues and to make sure that they're reported on their front. Thank you, Brian. Anna? Well, I would say that don't uh, underestimate the risk to your IT environment uh, and to your business and to your brand integrity or your brand reputation. Mm -hmm. Because if it's, it, this, is an, this is illegal, it's illegal to, to view, download and, and, and share uh, child sexual abuse material. So if you are in a possession of this type of material uh, in your organization, you, you are basically committing a crime. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, and for me, and I'm, uh, I think I said it before, no one can cannot do anything, everything, but everyone can do something. Um, and also, I would like to reply on Brian's um, outreach there to the companies. Don't be afraid to contact law enforcement agency. We're not the bad guys here. We we are on your side, and we want to do the best. And of course, we don't do we, we won't we won't do anything that affect your business. We just want to take care of the problem. So. Yeah reach out and um, build bridges. Mm. Thank you so much for your insights and your reflections. And for everyone watching, thank you to you too. Uh, if you haven't downloaded a report, pay a visit to netclean.com and uh, download a report and see for yourself. Thank you.